The American Deer and Wildlife Alliance is proud to present Deer and Wildlife Stories. I'm Keith Warren. Right on, baby. I'm a hunter. <laughs> a fisherman. That's what you don't want to do. See, that thing's gone all the way through my hand. A conservationist. Oh, come on. A family man. And I'm proud to be a deer farmer. Me? Yeah. I'm taking a road trip. And we're going behind the scenes of today's most innovative deer farmers and wildlife management operations in North America. This is how Washburn throws. This. This is Deer and Wildlife Stories. I hear you can throw faster than that. We're in northwestern Wisconsin and uh, this is a retired gentleman right here. He is a, he's, this old geezer is a retired major league ball player. His name is Jared Washburn. We're at Clam River Whitetails. And uh, it's interesting, the story about Jared is he, he, he's a, like I said, a retired major league player, but he's turned into a deer farmer. And this is a deer farmer. We're gonna tell you his story today. I'm telling you, I don't know if it's worth cleaning the feeders or not, but look at that. Might have to clean them twice today. Oh, what a wonderful thing, cleaning feeders. And after every rain, it's important to clean out every feeder, and it can be a bit messy. Well, there's a lot of water. Yeah, we got water all over. Eight inches this past week will do that to you. You guys go down that way and get those feeders down that alley, and me and Keith will go this way and get these ones. As we head to our first pen, Jared tells me about one lucky deer. What's the deal with this guy? This guy was born last year, and uh, when he was born, all four of his legs were all curled up, and, and he had no use of, either, of any of them. Greg, the farm manager, uh, he's got a heart of gold and loves the animals so much. He worked with them all summer long, trying to straighten his legs out and stretch the muscles all out and get it so he could use his legs and stuff, and, and now he's able to use all of his legs and and uh, gets around pretty good. His, his back hips are a little screwed up, so he walks a little goofy, so we named him Goofy. All right, well, Goofy but, is lucky because if he was born on the outside, he'd have been coyote bait. Right. I mean, right. coyotes he'd would have eaten him. He'd Eagles. Have been yep. All right, I've tried to do everything I can to kind of postpone this, but I don't think we're going to postpone it. Whoa, you look at that. That's a yearling right there on the left? Yeah, they're all yearlings. Woo wee. Morning, fellas. See, these pellets, protein pellets, what happens is when the water hits them, they will expand. And once that happens, it, they will plug up the feeders. The cool thing about this feeder, deer can come up here. There's two spouts on it, so two guys can come up at a time, one out of each spout. But if you let that feed get wet, it'll get hard like concrete. See, it almost turns to mush. You know, I can't wait to see you throw a ball. But I wound up, I was at Ricky Cleveland's, and he showed me how you threw. He was throwing peanuts to the deer, and he showed me, he says, he said, this is how Washburn throws. And it was something like this. Yeah, it didn't look too good. No, but I hear you can throw faster than that. Yeah, I'm going out on a limb and saying I could probably throw a little better than Ricky. <laughs> yep. Oh my goodness, I need a scooper for this side. I should make you use your hands, but. I'll let you have the scooper. Yeah. Wouldn't do that in a couple of days, I promise you. The diner, let it ring. What that means, if you call old Henry, who makes these feeders, you better let it ring, because Henry isn't gonna answer the phone on the first couple of rings, is he? No, <laughs> no. That's good for this one. That's about as good as it needs to be right now because I know as soon as the next rain comes through, which will probably be in about 10 minutes, we're gonna need to do it again. Looks like it might be good for 15. This is, to me, the best part of deer farming. Learning from deer. It, you could spend your rest of your life deer farming and you still won't know all there is to know. Okay, so let's tell everybody about your past. You grew up in Wisconsin yep. hunting and fishing and you were an avid deer hunter. You loved hunting. It, Next to, next to baseball, and to be honest, I might have liked hunting a little better than baseball. So what was it that, that got you in 
to, to deer farming? What was it? Out of all the things that you could do after baseball, you decided deer farming. I, I was, uh, I've always said and talked to my wife about how I'd love to have some, you know, my, my property fenced in and be able to sit on the front porch in the morning with some coffee and just have big bucks walking around the yard anytime and be able to look at deer. And the rest is history. I got the first few deer and uh, so I just started buying a little bit better genetics and jump feet first in. Isn't it? I mean, don't, you're not a, uh, you're not disappointed that you did it, are you? Oh, I am. I'm thankful every day that I made that decision. So, for those people that don't know that 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 they're deer hunters, avid deer hunters, and they think they know everything about deer and all that kind of stuff, what would you tell them about about what these guys can teach you? I'll tell you this: nobody knows everything about deer. Mm -mm. No, no. There's. Uh, I've I've always said baseball, pitching and and deer hunting and. Is, is kind of similar in the fact that you can do both every day for the rest of your life and you won't know all there is to know. You mm -hmm. gotta constantly be learning and and uh, just when you think you got the hitters figured out, they do something different and take you deep. And deer hunting is the same way and deer farming is the same way. You never have it all figured out. You constantly have to be making adjustments and learning new tricks and trying to figure things out and do what's best for the animals and what's best for the, for the deer. <laughs> This is wonderful. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, the North American Deer Registry, DNA Solutions, and Clam River Whitetails. Tell everybody what the purpose of this blind is. We have, uh, when it's fawning season and stuff, we have a lot of does, and rather than stressing them by coming out and just being visible, yeah. a lot of times we'll climb up here and uh, sit in here and watch them with binoculars and stuff, and then we can keep a good eye on who's getting ready to fawn, which does had which fawns, and, and we can really keep a close eye on them. All right, so what is this? This is what we put our alfalfa in. Keep it up off the ground to uh, uh, keep it clean and so hmm. they don't, a lot of times they like climbing around in it and then it prevents waste and stuff. And then the, the roof and the, the three walls keep it protected from the weather and, and uh, again, cuts down on the waste. Okay, let me ask you this, why isn't there alfalfa in here now? Right now, uh, it's, it's just kind of a waste. You put it in there and they really won't touch it uh, with all this green stuff out here. It's, uh, they, they, they prefer that fresh green stuff. And so. although you're feeding pellets, yep. you still feed, they still need roughage. So what's the, with the chain link in there? The chain link we put in all the alleyways where we run the animals into the handle facility. Yep. And uh, we do it for their protection. When they're running, sometimes they get a little nervous. And uh, if they're running where the, where the high tensile fence is, these big holes, sometimes they'll catch a nose or something. And, mm -hmm. and if, they, if they're running alongside of it, they'll catch an antler or a nose and then they can break their neck. The chain link, they just slide right along it. Oh, so well, that's a good idea. They have no no problems and it cuts down on any injuries if they happen to get excited. Huh. These are our waters. Every one of these pens has one of these in it. Mm -hmm. They're they're automatic. They refill good fresh water, clean water all the time, and they're all heated so in the wintertime it has ground heat that comes up and helps keep it from freezing up and they have good fresh water year round. All right. Well, you know what they say about the water. They want to get a lot of water in them. Look at this. That's amazing, the deer, in the water like that. I love seeing that. They are loving that. That's the cool thing about white-tailed deer. Every one of them looks different. Yeah, yeah. And you can breed that mom to the same buck every year. And she'll and never get something produce different. another right? one like it. <laughs> First time deer farmer. Uh, 
The most important thing I'd tell you, as far as words of advice, do your research on deciding what kind of farm you want to have. Do you want to have a, a farm that is, is a, on the breeder end of it, or do you want to produce shooters? And then research the types of animals you want to invest your money in. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by Chaffe, Pasture in a Bag, Oil Field Camo, Record Rack Deer Feeds, and s, &S Whitetail Galore. So what's this building here? This is our handling facility where we, uh, we have to give shots or TB test or AI season and all that. Vaccinations, all that. Well, this is where we're running them in and do all the work. So what's in there? In here is where our chute is and the, the handler and everything and mm -hmm. where all the action happens when we're running them and doing all the work. Oh, I have the exact same chute. I do not have a scale. Okay. But I have the exact same thing. The Papa. So what happens here, see I don't have a, this scale, but they'll wind up coming in here and yep. you can weigh every deer. And a deer farmer has to be able to be organized enough to where you have good records because the records are everything. So you can refer back to it. So they're going to come in through there. There's a sliding door here. Yep. They're going to come in here, close it, weigh them. Then this door gets opened and this deer moves up and gets closed and then that, and that loads up again. Yep. And right here, you can look and see who you've got. You can tell who is on the table. Okay, I got yellow 34, and they make notes on it. Then all of a sudden, you send yellow 34 in here. And right here is where it all happens Pop in the shoot. there, drop the floor on, and they're in there, can't move, and you can give them whatever you got to give them. Now on does, do you raise this up? We don't. I don't raise mine up either. Does scoot right underneath here and yep. back to where they need to go. This is where they wind up going. Yep, yep, and we open this. All these doors open up and close off the hallways. Mm -hmm. We run them into there and then we can close this off. So just like another tunnel system. It goes into there and then we can run them left or right. And huh. Those pulley systems there open doors that go out back outside and then we put them back out in their pens. Huh. Well, I know that, that looking at a system like this, you would probably think this it, it would intimidate you. Look at this. Jared's got a really good system. You don't have to have this to be a deer farmer. No, I mean, no. This, this is this is really, really nice. You but you don't do have it. to have. No, it. you can do it on a much smaller scale, much simpler scale, and and uh, you know, with uh, Ron and Mary Pierce helped me with uh, the design of the building, and uh, their two sons that came and built the building and helped us out designing it and putting it all together, and uh, they did an incredible job. It's, it, the system works great for us. Yeah, they're not even Amish. <laughs> so this is your nursery, huh? Yep, this is where we start all the fawns at. It's called a fawn floor. And uh, right after they're born, so leave them with the mother for a day or two and then we pull them off and bring them in here and this is where they spend the first few weeks of their lives and each and guy then where'd they go then from here after they get big enough and start to look like they want to jump out of here we move them over here to these bring them in here so how many will you put in here uh usually just two sometimes we'll put in three okay and then how long do you leave them here we'll leave them in here until uh until they start to get a little bigger and probably about a month and a half old I gotta show you a couple things that are pretty neat. Look at this sling right here. This sling is so you can put deer in, okay? And what they do, put the deer in there and they can lower it down to where its legs hit the ground. And this runs up to the top to a track and it's, they can walk down there, turn around and walk back. You may think why in the world they want to do something like that. That's for rehabilitation. And then, but you've had some like like uh, Goofy out there. Like Goofy, yep. Born with just bad legs. And they'll go in here and they'll, and once they're up here, they can adjust the height, then they can work on their legs and get them physical therapy. And uh, I think that's pretty amazing. So when they graduate from here, yep. this is where they go. All right. Bring them out here. And, and they got a guillotine door to the outside. Guillotine door, and they each got their own little pen outside so they can spend time inside and outside. Yep. You have fly control in here. On any operation like this, you're going to have flies are going to be an issue. And look up here. 
and uh, that's how they catch their flies right there. They do a pretty good job of it. But in each one of these pens, you can see it's got food and water. Okay, so they can go become acclimated to the outside here. Mm -hmm. But then when they get a little bit older, show us where they go. Get a little bit older, we got a bigger pen we'll move them into. Then we let them out here, they come out here into this bigger pen and then get more introduced into a bigger area and more of what their everyday life is gonna be like after this. Wonderful. Wonderful, I cannot believe all the water you've got sitting. I know. I know. World record rainfall. And it looks like <laughs> we're gonna get more. <laughs> Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by Bad Boy Mowers and Multi-Terrain Vehicles, BuckBreeders.com, Whitetail Sales and Service, and SemenSupply.com. Breed only the best. Um, I played professional baseball for 15 years, uh, almost 12 of those in the big leagues. I first got into the big leagues in 1998 and I was drafted in 1995 by the California Angels. Played for 10 years in the Angels organization, then I moved on to Seattle and then finished my career in Detroit. Uh, that entire time it was the greatest job in the world because I had the fall off so I could go hunting all the time. And, uh, as soon as the season was over, I got out of whatever big city I was in at the time and rushed home back here to northwest Wisconsin and got out in the woods as fast as I could. Uh, the hardest part about being a professional ball player is, is so much time on the road, so much traveling. Uh, we have 162 games in a season. 81 of those are on the road, so that's that's a ton of time away from my family. And I decided it was time to stay home with my family. I missed so much of my kids growing up already to this point. Uh, I didn't want to miss anymore, so it was time for me to retire and, and come home and, and be with my family all the time instead of just part time. We're all taking part in the deer farming business, even though I don't know maybe selling what this deer from that deer. The kids are enjoying it. We're learning. We're all out there together. Sometimes, you know, looking at him, he's showing, he's very excited about, you know, what he's doing in the deer farming business. And, you know, we're all enjoying doing that with him. Um, we're having more time now that baseball is done to go out and spend time as a family here at home doing those kinds of things. It's just a great thing for, for the family. The family's always out, whether it's feeding treats to the deer or bottle feeding the fawns or just going out to take pictures of the, of the bucks or, you know, just, just to look at them. It's, it's, it's extremely therapeutic and, and great quality family time just to go out and enjoy the deer together and, and it's just a relaxing atmosphere to just go out and have some, some great family time. Jared's very passionate, so it, this is, deer farming is something that he's really found that he has a passion for. Deer farming is, is just going to be a great tool for, for the rest of my life. You know, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy that can ever sit around the house and, and be bored. I'm always, I've always got to be outside doing something and keeping busy, and the deer farm allows me to do that and, and, uh, and, and do something I love while, while keeping busy. And the really great thing about deer farming and, and the people in the deer farming industry is everybody is so willing to help anybody, whether it's somebody in the deer farming industry that has a question, um, everybody is so willing to, to offer advice on what things they need to do, or whether it's people who have no, no idea that deer farming exists. I mean, since I bought this deer farm, I've had tons of people come up and ask me, oh, can I come out and see the deer? I've never seen a deer farm before, and, and uh, I'm, there's tons of deer farmers out there that are just like me. Anybody that wants to come visit the farm will welcome you with open arms to their farm and teach you about the industry and, and about the farming. And uh, you know, go to, the, go to an event, go to one of these auctions or one of these uh, annual, uh, the Nadifa get together every year. And, you know, they're just excellent, excellent things to go to and learn about the industry and everybody there is, is uh, willing to help and, and show you everything there is to know about the industry. I hope you enjoyed today's show, and for more information on today's featured deer farmer, contact the phone number that you see on the screen right now. Or you can log on to our website where we'll have a direct link from our site to theirs. And now a conservation message brought to you by the Hunter Heritage Foundation. 
School curriculums across the country teach our children that wildlife suffers at the hands of human beings. Government educators and activists paint a bleak picture that all human activities harm or destroy wildlife habitat. Their examples of damming rivers or clearing forests teach that agriculture and industry are bad. Even the renowned educator World Book tells children that, quote, the future remains uncertain for the world's wildlife, and quote, human activities kill off species with no hope for their replacement. When it comes to habitat, some of this is true. No question, land fragmentation and unbridled development are serious problems for habitat. But mankind, and sportsmen in particular, do a lot of good to preserve habitat and improve conditions for many species. These are lessons our children are not hearing. Deer farmers and ranchers across North America, for example, dedicate hundreds of thousands of acres to preserve wildlife habitat. These staunch conservationists could easily make more money selling their land to a developer, but they know natural habitat is more important than having another shopping mall. While some may criticize their fences, their unselfish devotion is at the heart of wildlife conservation efforts. Land stewardship and habitat management initiated by sportsmen across this country help to ensure animals not only survive in a specified area, they thrive for generations to come. That's a valuable lesson learned, and it's one our kids desperately need to hear. You can now watch full episodes of Deer and Wildlife Stories and our sister program, The High Road, online 24-7 at keithwarren.net. While you're there, check out our Facebook fan page where you can become eligible to win prizes and more. Look for our new program, Ranch Properties TV, coming up this summer. This program is dedicated to the brave men and women of the United States military, past, present, and future. May God bless America.